Hi everyone, it's Gloria, and I'm here with Lily Beth today to celebrate Onesie Wednesday, and also to participate in Debbie's uh, of Reborn Blessed giveaway. And in her giveaway, she wanted us to tell about and show our first doll or some of our earliest uh, toys. And uh, I don't have any of my early dolls. I never had very many, but um, they are long gone and their memories are etched in my mind, but uh, I wish I did have them to show you, but I only have two of my childhood dolls. One I had showed in a previous video. It's the one called Little Me, which was in response to Amy of Mesh 312's Theme Thursday, and that is my three-foot doll named um, Andrea, and I got her uh, as a preteen, like about 13 years of age. And then I have my Barbie, and uh, Barbie I got in 1959. And um, what I want to do a little differently about this video, other than show you her, is um, I have also mentioned in a previous video that I write, and several years ago I completed a manuscript called Reflections of Tea and Friendship. And uh, the in the book... The chapters, each chapter is just a vignette of something that happened in my life uh, from the time of, I guess, from about the time I was around five years old. Um, things that happened in my life that had to do with friends and had to do with tea. And I compile these into a book and they, they're, the vignettes are in chronological order. And so I thought I would take this opportunity since this is not something that will perhaps ever get published. Uh, it was mostly written for myself and I wrote it for my daughter to read uh, and perhaps read to her little girl. Uh, and just to capture childhood memories, you know how that is. But uh, I wanted to read to you all the chapter that um, I wrote about my Barbie. And then I'll show you my Barbie. And this is called Barbie's Tea Set. In 1959, the new Barbie doll was all the rage. Little girls clamored to get the shapely teenage doll with the ponytail and latest fashions. And who among the younger adolescent crowd could resist the painted nails, earrings, and high heels she sported? Since it wasn't Christmas or my birthday, the possibility was rather remote that I would be given a Barbie doll. My parents would rarely spend money on things of that nature at any other time of the year. They genuinely didn't have it to spare, and I already had two baby dolls, enough from their point of view. So to my way of thinking, as badly as I wanted a Barbie doll, I resorted to the next best thing. Without their knowledge, I did without school lunch money a number of times throughout the fifth grade year, saving the money until I had enough to buy her myself. After school was out for the summer, I was invited to go shopping with one of my friends who lived across town. She came from a well-to-do family, was an only child, and already had a Barbie doll complete with fashion suitcase, wardrobe, and accessories. I thought what fun it would be if we could play Barbies together and felt that I had waited long enough for mine. While at the shopping center, I purchased the buxom, beautiful blonde Barbie. She came dressed in a black and white, one-piece strapless bathing suit that reminded me of a zebra, and I had just enough money saved to buy her one dressy outfit. I was thrilled to finally call her my own, although I knew I wasn't out of the woods by any means. Overly developed teenage dolls were unheard of back then, not to mention that I had bought her without permission. I devised a way to slowly introduce her to my mother by saying how much fun it was going to be to have a Barbie like all my other friends, and how little she cost, and how I would promise to take really good care of her, and how I wouldn't want another thing now that I had one of my very own. 
My staunchly conservative mother may not have been so easily convinced, but it was surely worth a try. And, you know, to my surprise and after a little ado over my deception, Mother came to terms with Barbie as a member of my doll family and seemed to enjoy the fact that I had finally found something at home for a change to occupy my playtime. Granted, imaginary play with a doll whose focus is fashion was hardly entertaining with only one change of clothes. Searching for alternative methods of play, I turned to my father for help. To the back of our property was his woodworking shop and automobile garage. There one could find numerous small blocks and unusually shaped pieces of wood fit only for tinkering. He agreed to make some doll furniture for Barbie, and bless my father, before the day was over, she had her very own bed, sofa, table, and chair. The following Christmas, my sister gave me an entire Barbie wardrobe she made mostly by hand, and I couldn't have been happier. Her new wardrobe included a bright yellow sundress with a gathered skirt and white ruffled eyelet lace collar, perfect for afternoon teas, an aqua taffeta strapless evening gown to dance the night away, and a set of pastel pink shorty baby doll pajamas trimmed with satin ribbon for all those spend-the-night parties we would share. The outfits rivaled many of the ready-made Barbie clothes belonging to my friends and most definitely enhanced our tea parties and playtime with the dolls. The only thing I considered lacking was a tea set for Barbie. Mother would often give me a little change to spend at the Ben Franklin Five and Dime behind the local Quick Check grocery store where she shopped. Though I usually spent the change on candy or in rare cases saved up to buy paper dolls, one day, while browsing the toy aisle, something else caught my eye. There, hanging from a rack in a small package, was a pink translucent plastic tea set for the, the, excuse me, the perfect size for Barbie. So much for the candy that day. The pieces of the miniature tea set were formed in a style that grand ladies used at tea time. Very grown-up looking, I thought, and just what I had been wanting. I had long since grown weary of setting Barbie's new table with small bottle caps or imaginary tea sets and could hardly wait to get it home. That evening I dressed Barbie in her bright yellow dress, pearls and gloves, and we had the best tea party ever. I spent many afternoons happily playing house and serving tea to my beloved Barbie and my friends. Barbie dolls. Oh, goodness, I skipped a page, lady. Excuse me. To this day, over 50 years later, and now, ladies, uh, it's much longer than 50 years since I wrote this several years ago, I have my Barbie and the outfit I bought for her with my school lunch money. She is as lovely as the day I bought her and is the only Barbie I ever owned. How nice it would have been had I kept the little plastic tea set and furniture pieces my father made for her as well. Well, that's the little vignette I wrote about my Barbie, and I would like to share her with you now. Uh, she is the second um, in the production line of the Barbie dolls. She has never had her hair, the front of her hair combed. Now, I did take the ponytail down and uh, put this hair up on top of her head as a bun. So the, the little curl at the bottom uh, I, I had cut off because it had become frizzy. And that was many, many years ago. And the hair has uh, turned uh, more of a strawberry blonde color over the years instead of the platinum blonde that it was originally. But these are her original sunglasses. Now one of the little side pieces is missing. And this is her original bathing suit. And she has the beautifully painted little fingernails and toenails. And I'm not going to pull it down because I, I tried this uh, in the first trial of this video and uh, I, it, I couldn't do it with one hand but ladies on her bottom right here it says Barbie Mattel patent pending 
So that shows you how old this doll is. She's from 1959, and I'm going to remove her sunglasses so you can see her pretty face. <clears throat> now, those of you that know Barbie dolls may be familiar with the ones that have the, um, the heavy eye makeup that look like cat eyes, and I never did care for that. And that's why I did not purchase one from the first um, production of Barbie. This this came out right after that in 1959. Same year, just the second go-round of her. So I thought this one's eyes were just much prettier. And um, she's faded out just a little bit over the years. But I have taken extremely good care of her, as I did all my toys. And I will show you from my little story. This is the only real Barbie outfit that I ever had the money to buy for her. The only one that she ever owned. But this is original from 1959. It's, it has the zipper. It still works, which I think is just adorable. Uh, I no longer have the little brown shoes that went with it. And it came with a, a little pearl necklace and pearl bracelet and a uh, little wrist length uh, gloves and they fit into this little handbag that came with the outfit it's faded a little bit over the years but it is turquoise corduroy and it is lined with satin and it has a little bead closure here and uh, like I said this is from my original Barbie and over the years the clothes that my sister made for her in all the moves and everything, I guess just got tossed away or something. They probably yellowed with age, and I just didn't think they were any good anymore. I wish I had kept them. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little story there. Told you a little bit about how I came to get my Barbie. And uh, now I'll tell you about Lily Beth for Onesie Wednesday. Uh, I have her own this really, really, I think it's adorable, this little onesie. It's polka dot. has a cute, cute little neckline. Of course, I got this at the thrift stores, ladies. And it has a little bear, and she's watering her flowers. And uh, I have a little bear that I got at Goodwill the other day for 25 cents. I washed it and put it in the dryer, and it looks like new. I love all the beautiful little pastel colors on it. And her pacifier. And here's my little dollar blanket that I got from Goodwill. Also, the socks are from Goodwill. And if you'll recall in my haul from the consignment store, these are the little shoes. I believe I paid a dollar fifty for them. Maybe two dollars. I can't remember. It wasn't over two dollars. I believe it was just a dollar fifty. But I put this together. Um, as an outfit for her. Uh, the greens don't perfectly match, but I don't mind that, ladies. I, You know, she's just so cute. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but I love the little puff sleeve onesie. And uh, let's see. Let's take away her pacifier, and you can see her sweet little mouth this morning. My precious little Lily Beth. And I think I've kept you long enough, ladies, and so hope you enjoyed the video, and I look forward to seeing yours. We'll say bye for now from Lily Beth and Gloria. Bye-bye.